Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, one thing I've been told recently is that evolution happens slowly. Evolution happens very slowly. Evolution happens far too slowly for it to have an effect uh, in uh, over a period of a hundred years or so. It takes a thousand years or more for evolution to have any impact. And other people have asked, well, how quickly does mutation build up? Uh, how, how quickly uh, does evolution happen? And so I want to answer that question today, and the answer is... A a lot more quickly than you'd think. Now, in a sense, talking about the speed of evolution is meaningless. Something is only quick or slow in comparison to something else. So I want to give an example in terms of the speed at which we are selecting against intelligence. In 1800, or until 1800 rather, we we had 50% child mortality. Uh, what that and what that was doing every generation was selecting for intelligence. We know that we can chart, as I have done in Adol Wit's End, the rise of intelligence across time using markers such as uh, per capita major innovation, or such uh, uh, as uh, uh, head size across time, and a number of other markers. And they're all going up, consistent with the idea that we're becoming more intelligent. And we know from Wills in the 17th century that the richer 50% of the population had doubled the completed fertility of the poorer 50%. Uh, wealth correlates with intelligence at about 0.3 or 0.4. The heritability of intelligence is extremely high. It's about 0.8. So it seems fairly clear that we were selecting for intelligence. And indeed, research by Gregory Clark has shown that using unusual surnames, that the heritability of socioeconomic status across time between medieval England and the 1950s was about 0.7. So almost the same as the heritability of intelligence, which we know is incredibly important um, to so, so socioeconomic status. So we were selecting for intelligence until about 1800. Then we get the Industrial Revolution and child mortality gradually collapses from 50% or something like that in about 1800 to 1% today. <clears throat> Now, what does that mean in real terms? Well, we know what's going on. It means that we are selecting against intelligence and we are doing so at something like 1.5 points per decade. So we are becoming 1.5 points less intelligent per decade, which is 15 points over 100 years. Now, what does that mean in everyday terms for us to lose 15 points? Because that's when we can start talking about the speed of evolution. It's, it's speedy in the sense that we notice it. Would we notice across 100 years a decline in 15 points? And I would like to suggest that we would, because it would mean that the average person, if we lost 15 points between about 1880 and the year 2000, this means that the average person in the year 2000, uh, the per that, that is to say a person in the year 2000 who was capable of being a police officer or a fireman or whatever, uh, a, you know, the average office job type person, in, uh, in about 1880, that person would be below average. That person would be, let's say, a, a, at the time, a, a, a farm labourer. Or, or, or working in a factory or something like that. He'd be he'd be below average uh, in in 1880 or in 1900. And the person who were the school teacher, the school teacher of now, who has an IQ of 115, he'd be the let's say the high school science teacher. He'd be the average person in the year 90, in the year 1900 or so. So he'd be. If it was modern day, he'd be a policeman or he'd be working in an office or, or whatever. At that time, the average person was probably a factory worker or something like that. And the person who is the academic, the person who is, let's say, the professor of science, has an IQ of about 130, or the person who is the, the senior lawyer or the senior doctor in the year 2000, um, that person is a school teacher uh, or um, a nurse or, or an accountant or some other job that is an IQ of about 115, you know, that is that, that, is that level. Um, and the person um, who, uh, who is the academic, therefore, the person that's the really, really clever person, uh, you know, the, the senior academic or whatever, uh, in 1900, he basically doesn't exist in the year 2000. He's boiled off. He's not there. That's what it means.
And at the other extreme, the person who has an IQ of, let's say, 85, 59 IQ points below the mean, um, and, and he's, a, I don't know, a car mechanic or a low-level security guard or something like that in the year 2000, he's in the workhouse or on the streets or dead um, in the year 1900. And the, the, and the unemployable underclass of the year 2000, who have an IQ of below 85, who have an IQ of between 85 and 70, something like that, those people simply don't exist in the year 1900. They're not there. They're a tiny, minuscule percentage of the population uh, who, who are just... Per who, they don't exist. Now, that's a significant difference, and that shows you... Now, and then the question, of course, as, as I hope this is illustrating, is what does it do at the extremes? If we set the IQ at 100 and we reduce it by 15 points, so that means that we in the year 2000 have an IQ of 85 by the standards of the year 1900. That's what that means. And by the way, based on current modelling, by the end of the century, we will have an IQ of 85 by current standards. So that means that the average person, by current standards, the average person at the end of the century, the average person who is now capable of working with computers in an office or being a policeman or being a fireman or something like that, he won't be capable of doing that by the end of the century. The average person will be capable of being a low-level security guard or something like that, that or, or you know, that, uh, 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 working in a shop or whatever. That's what the average person will be doing by the end of the century. And what does that do at the extremes? Well, it does something quite big at the extremes, because at the moment... 2% of the population have an IQ of over 130, if by our standards of our current IQ of 100. Have an IQ, because it's a, very, it's a movable feast, remember, the, the 100. The 100 is the average any given time. So our IQ of 100, 2% of the population uh, have an IQ of over 130, and we would say those people are capable of being senior lawyers, senior doctors, acad uh, uh, acad scientists, that sort of thing, 2%. At the other extreme, 2% have an IQ of below 70. And we, re we regard those people as unemployable, as, as mentally retarded, as incapable of doing any meaningful work. Now, if we move the IQ by 15 points, if we lose 15 points, that 2% at the top disappears. And that 2% retarded, useless population at the bottom becomes 16%. And the other way, in Victorian England or whatever, in late Victorian England, 2% are now over 130 and are capable of doing seriously intelligent stuff. In 1900, that's 16%. So this is showing you how quick this is happening and what a big impact it would have on the culture. Imagine how different our culture would be if 16% of the society had an IQ that would make them, by our current standards, capable of being a scientist. It would be a very different society. It would be a more rational society, a more logical society. Things would work better and the culture would be led by these people and, and, and they would move the society uh, in a more logical uh, 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 direction. But we don't have that. Um, and we are moving towards a situation where those people don't exist at all. And it's over 115 where it's 2% of the population, not over 130. Over 100, between 115 and 130 is 2% of the population. That's what we're moving towards. So that the cleverest people in the society are the midwits. That's what we're moving towards. And you can see what that, what that would do then is it would, it, not only would it change the nature of the society and you would notice lots of little differences, lots of things going wrong all the time, but it would change the nature of the education system such that we would no longer be being pushed to our phenotypic maximum intelligence by living in a highly intelligent, highly stimulating society, pushing us to our maximum IQ. So therefore our IQ, would, which is 80% heritable, remember, the 20% is environment, would go down at the phenotypic level as well. And so then you, you would have a, a, a roller coaster of collapse of IQ and you would have a very different kind of society. But it doesn't take 15 points for, just for you to notice differences. The IQ difference between, let's say, England and Japan 
is between five and seven points. Do you notice differences between England and Japan? Well, of course you do. Japan is more intelligent by about five points, seven points, something like that, than English people. It's less corrupt. It's more efficient. Everything works better. It's higher in trust. It is reflective of every correlate of a more intelligent society. And that's just five points. So that can happen. That can happen in about 30 years. That's all. Five points based on current dysgenics. So this is showing you that these genetic changes are not a slow process. They have consequences over a few decades, not over a number of centuries. They have consequences over a few decades. So it is quicker than you would think. To get to return to the example I gave earlier <coughs> of the rich outbreeding the, the poor in uh, pre-modern or uh, uh, pre-industrial England, it, uh, we imagine this, uh, they, this was a society of social descent. Every generation in general, the younger son is of a lower social rank than his father. So let's go back to the 1300s. There's, you've got your king. His son is a nobleman. His son is a higher member of the gentry. His son is a lower member of the gentry. His son is a yeoman who does a bit of farming himself. His son is a husbandman who takes the plough himself. His son is a shepherd or a labourer. And his son is, uh, uh, you, you know, is, is serious trouble, is destitute. Now that takes something like seven or eight generations. If Let's say for the sake of argument, 50 years to a generation, we could say 30. It's about 400 years. And therefore it is the difference between 1300 and about 1800 when we were super intelligent. And across that time, you can trace our heads getting bigger, murder rates going down, cruelty to animals going down, per capita innovation going up, all of these indicators that we were becoming more, more intelligent changing. And you could then highlight it probably across 50 years and you would see differences um, that would be consistent with IQ going up until the breakthrough of the Industrial Revolution, you, you, like a tipping point is reached, shall we say, when you see massive differences very, very quickly. Uh, and in the same way with the collapse, eventually it gets to a point where you can't sustain a complex society anymore and then you would see massive differences very, very quickly. Now, we're not seeing that yet, but we are seeing, I think, in terms of everyday life, just as Raymond Cattell predicted in the 30s, a society obsessed with sex, a society that's corrupt, a society that lies, a society that's ideological. All of these things are there. And so I think that the idea that evolution happens slowly is, is palpably untrue. You can notice it over a few decades. And as a person who is 42, I would say since I was a child, I have indeed noticed it. Hello, hello, hello. The Jolly Heretic is an online public house which meets on Mondays and Thursdays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, in which we discuss the kind of based, fearless science which is increasingly expunged from our woke, joke universities. If you would like to help the Jolly Heretic public house, and there are many ways you can do so, please, please, please become one of my patrons on Subscribestar. Also, if you want to, you can donate to the channel uh, using Odyssey and Entropy, and you can also purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise, such as uh, shirts and mugs. All of the links are in the description. Again, I'd be most violently grateful if you could assist the Jolly Heretic Public House and I will see you all soon and goodbye!